What is up, Waffle Gang? I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and welcome to r slash am I the bad ho? <laughs> if you enjoy Reddit videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe and that notification bell too. For some reason, YouTube doesn't seem to be notifying people just recently, so do not forget to hit that if you want to keep updated. And let's crack on with today's stories. Much love, guys. Now this story does come with an update and it's from Relative Insect 8404 titled Am I the arsehole for forcing my son to do some sort of research on our daughter's condition? English isn't my first language, sorry in advance for any errors. I 41 female have two kids, 12 female and 15 male. My daughter has a condition called endometriosis and for those unaware it's a condition in which the uterus tissue doesn't grow properly and due to this periods can become much worse. For those aware of the condition, if you're wondering, I have a friend who is a gynecologist who was able to help us. I say this because of how hard this condition is to diagnose normally. My son has never taken it seriously and had said things along the lines of she needs to suck it up or she needs to stop being so obnoxious in reference to groaning noises. I've told him to stop and threaten punishment, but I let him slide as I attributed it to virtual school stress and as of late, final stresses and he has made these comments to me, so it wasn't a big of an issue. At the end of last month, their school ended yet, he still made this comment today. So I told him that he needs to research and learn about this condition for an entire week, or the next one, so that he learns to be more sympathetic. He was upset by this and said he didn't want to, and I told him he had to, and he groaned and he went to go and do it. Yet my husband, 43 male, said this was unreasonable and even if it was a reasonable punishment, forcing him to do research isn't going to help. I told my husband that I wasn't forcing him to be sympathetic, I was forcing him to learn about the pain. We argued for a bit before my husband told me I was too stubborn and walked away. Now I feel that forcing him may have been a bad decision as it is a bit unreasonable and it won't have much of an effect. So, am I the arsehole? And we did cover this one. This story was about from three months ago, but the update has only just come out recently, hence why I'm reading the initial story again. Once again, I think this was a great learning opportunity for your son. And I think you presented it to him and said, look, go and research it. And then you might understand a bit about the pain. And I think back then I probably related this to a colleague that I used to work with who was in and out of the hospital all the time trying to get a diagnosis for this. And, you know, on some days the pain was so bad that she just had to get up and leave from work. And boy, you could see the pain on her face. And I think what you're doing, what you're doing here, I think that's a perfectly valid, well, it's not even a punishment, is it? Asking to someone to research about what their sister is going through is not a punishment in my opinion, and it's just good education. And maybe the dad should be doing it too, but Silphie Star says not the arsehole. Perhaps your husband should also do some research with your son. Might be good for both of them. Deletion says not the arsehole, and I think that's a completely reasonable punishment for this scenario. Making him learn something is not cruel and unusual by any means. Your husband should really be more understanding. Maybe he needs to do some research himself and then he'd understand how fucked up his son's actions are. Abby says, not the arsehole. Your son reminds me of people that tell women suffering from pain during their periods to stop being dramatic. Or when someone runs out of pads and their parents or partner are slow, reluctant to help them get in products, say something stupid like, hold it in till I bring it home. If your son has ever been ill or injured and cried or made sounds over it, I'm pretty sure nobody in the home ever told him to suck it up. He isn't pain's gatekeeper and he doesn't get to tell someone how much pain they're allowed to be in. Even if he doesn't gain sympathy from this, he should be made aware that complaining about someone suffering will not be tolerated under any circumstances. Testing, working or whatever he thinks is acceptable. Alarming Season says, wow, this is actually a good approach, but I do hope he learns the scientific reasons with videos that feature real gynecologists, all available on YouTube. If he can cite the sites, reference books, and give it like a presentation or essay, it would be better. So, not the asshole. You could have shouted or chosen to ignore, but this approach is way better than either of those options. Curly Tomato says, not the asshole. I saw a video a while ago about a machine that simulated period pains that men could wear and try so they would see what it felt like. They were all shocked and that is multiplied with their condition. Perhaps he can equate it to being kicked in the nuts. Yes, we as women know it hurts, but all that gasping and rolling around on the ground, shake it off, right? This last part is sarcastic, but it may get through to him. 
And we have a couple more, one from Lady Cass who says, not the arsehole, you're entirely reasonable and this is a great idea. I think he's getting the concept that a woman's pain can be dismissed as it's exaggerated from his father based on his dad's reaction. No occasion says, not the arsehole, you're educating your son on a very real, very painful condition. That's really all you can do. I truly hope both your son and husband learn to be more compassionate. You're doing the best you can. I'm glad your daughter has you. And now we're gonna move on to the update and let's hope for a positive one here. So update, it's been about two months since my original post and I would like to thank you all for the loving and supportive comments. I talked with my husband about what he felt was inherently wrong with our son researching. He said he at first kind of found it weird to be a feminine issue and making our son deeply research it was weird. We talked it out and it started to make him realize why it wasn't weird and why it was pretty necessary. He started to realize where he was wrong and talked to our son about it. After they talked it out, my son was able to realize why he was wrong and where he went wrong. He also quite enjoys music from the singer Halsey, who also happens to have endometriosis. And after reading her story with many others, he became much more empathetic. I also realized this week it was excessive and let him go at his own pace as long as he was making progress, which he did. Nowadays, he's caring and helpful towards my daughter when she is in pain and their bond has strengthened through it. I would like to thank you all again for all the support. And I think that's a positive update and I'm, I'm glad that the dad saw it as well after talking to the mum about what happened and you know he seemed to have come around as well and i kind of find it a bit weird that you know it took the dad talking to the son to actually get through to him but still it's positive in the end right i'm glad that their bond has strengthened through it and all that kind of thing but what do you guys make of this one let me know your thoughts in the comments below and we'll move on to another story and our next story comes from am i the asshole not daddy though Am I the asshole for kicking my husband out after he made a tantrum because my son refuses to call him dad? My husband, Josh, 30, and I, 32 female, have been married for over a year and dated for five. I have a son, S, 12, from a previous relationship. My ex and I are nowhere near friends, but he's an amazing father towards our kid in every possible way. My kid adores his father and they look pretty much alike. Josh and I have been trying to get pregnant for two years without success because he has a low count. We've tried everything, but right now we can only hope that it happens naturally since we can't afford more treatments. I guess that's out of sadness. Josh has been around S a little more, trying to get him to do things together and spend some time. S loves him, but he sees my husband as an authority or uncle figure and not like a dad. Josh has been trying to get S to call him dad or father since we began to try and have a baby because he didn't want my son to feel left out. But S has refused every single time and continued to call him Josh. It's okay. I had a talk with my husband about how S just prefers his name and that it's nothing personal. After a few more times, Josh desisted. But right now, my husband has began to try again and S continues to refuse, saying that he already has a daddy and that he doesn't like the pressure Josh puts on him. I've tried to talk to my husband again, but every time he says, that's not fair, my ex gets all the credit while he's been a father figure for my kid half of his life. I told him that we cannot force ex to call him something he doesn't want to and that not being called dad makes him less than my ex. I thought that was it, but yesterday, while we're having dinner, S told my husband, Josh, look at this, and my husband totally snapped. He grounded my son and took his switch, saying, unless he starts calling him dad, he won't get it back. S was almost crying, and I told him that none of that was going to happen, because we won't force him to do something he doesn't want to do. My husband began to throw a tantrum about how it's not fair, how S looks so much like my ex, and it's always a reminder, and he deserves more respect. I told him to get out of the house until his mind is clearer and doesn't feel that fighting a kid, it's right. I get that Josh feels desperate and hurt, but I don't think that making S call him dad is the right move. However, I could be wrong. I know that my ex won't have any problem sharing the title and I'm afraid I might be the asshole for not taking Josh's feelings into consideration. To me, it's not about what husband thinks, it's not about what the ex-partner thinks, but it's about what the son thinks, you know, his boundaries, what he feels comfortable with. And in some ways, you know, it almost felt like because he can't, he's having trouble like having kids himself because of the issues that's going on. He's putting that onto the son, which is just totally unfair. And you, and you need to protect your son from that because it's just not on. Niara says, not the arsehole. You're standing up for your son and what he's comfortable with. 
Your husband has absolutely no right to force this or get mad when your son doesn't like it. Your husband is the asshole all the way. Protect your son. Amethyst35 says, not the asshole, put your son first. Your husband is out of line and being upset with your son for looking like your ex is messed up. Real love doesn't divide or require titles. Your son is never going to feel comfortable with a stepfather acting like this and you have a duty to protect him. You did exactly what you should have. Fascination Street says, well, I certainly hope you didn't have kids with this guy. Not the asshole, but what is your plan now? You can't just allow Josh to slink back in after a couple of days and this all gets brushed under the carpet. Josh's behavior must stop. Josh's whole attitude is toxic and your son is at risk with him in the house. Donnie Ganga says, not the asshole. Your husband is behaving like a lunatic. Mrs. Jones says, not the asshole. My father forced me at 12 years old to refer to my stepmother as mama. I hated it. My mum was in my life and I felt like one, I had zero autonomy. Two, I had to do what was uncomfortable just to be respectful. Three, I betrayed my birth mother. Demo Beck says not the arsehole and good on you for standing up for your kid. Forcing him to call another man dad while he already has a great one will end in resentment and nastiness. Josh is completely unreasonable. Tana says that not the arsehole. Don't have kid with us guys. He's acting like a complete lunatic. Trillium Summer says not the arsehole. You need to protect your son. I'm sorry Josh might not be able to biologically be a father, but the way he's handling air school sure is shit and sure no one will see him as a father if he can't have a kid biologically. Grounding him for calling by his name is beyond the pale and you're right for calling Josh out. African Wanderer says, Josh is borderline abusing your kid, projecting his inability to have kids into something your son needs to make better. You did an okay job protecting your kid, but you need to do better. Hard boundaries if Josh does come back, an honest apology and this dad thing ends forever. This moment will be replaying in your son's mind for the rest of his life. I'm relieved that he'll remember his mum standing up for him against a bully, but if you backtrack, it will break his ability to trust you in ways that can't ever really be fixed. Now, what do you guys make of this story? How would you handle this situation? Do you think Josh deserves to be let back in? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and we'll move on to another story. Now we have a story from Mozo423. Am I the asshole for not doing my roommate's dishes even though he does mine? Hear me out, my roommate is the kind of person who will just wash all the dishes in the sink, regardless of who they are. It's perfectly reasonable. You're already doing your own dishes, why not take a small amount of extra effort to finish off your roommates while you're at it? Besides, he tells us he enjoys doing routine tasks like this. It helps him think, he insists. Which is nice and all, except then we'll get extremely upset at me if I don't do his dishes while I'm washing my own. The thing is, I've repeatedly told him that while I appreciate the help, I can't promise to always return the favor, and I'd much rather him leave my dishes alone for me to clean. Nonetheless, this has led to me being constantly berated by my roommate. Anytime we have a disagreement about something, he immediately brings up the fact that, oh yeah, well I do your dishes all the time, and proceeds to paint me an asshole for not being willing to lift but one finger to reciprocate the favor. I don't always have the same kind of energy as my roommate does. I have diagnosed depression and I'm in therapy and I really do my best just focusing on my own tasks. So when I decide to use the kitchen, part of the calculation for me is taking on the responsibility of cleaning whatever dishes I use. Sure, if I have extra time and motivation, I'm absolutely down to be nice once in a while and take care of other people's dishes while I'm at it, but I don't want it to be an expectation. My roommate thinks that my mindset is genuinely selfish and narcissistic, but to me, it's putting up boundaries. I am often insanely busy. As a self-employed freelancer, I sometimes work up to 80 hours in a week. It's barely enough for me to keep up with a bare minimum of household chores. So while I do my dishes, sometimes it's literally all I can do to just clean what is mine. My roommate, on the other hand, is unemployed, living off parents, and has quite a bit more time on his hands. It's great that he wants to use the extra time to help with his roommate's chores, but that's his decision and I don't think it's fair for him to hold it against me when I've made it very clear that I prefer to take care of my own dishes. Am I the arsehole? And trying to be helpful here says, you're the arsehole. You shouldn't leave your dishes in the shared sink anyway and your roommate's right that it doesn't take much effort to finish the dishes once you get the momentum going. Helpful hint, I had a depression relapse a few months ago where I couldn't cope with dishes. I bought some disposable plates and bowls. It was easier to cope with my guilt over destroying the planet and having dirty dishes constantly hanging over my head. 
Arjuk Burrito says, you're the asshole, then quotes, you're already doing your own dishes. Why not take the small amount of extra effort to finish off your roommates while you're at it? Then says, why doesn't this apply to you? And quotes, so when I decide to use the kitchen, part of the calculation for me is taking on the responsibility of cleaning whatever dishes I use. And then says, liar. Obviously, you don't take on the responsibility of cleaning whatever dishes you use. If this was the case, your roommate would never be cleaning your dishes and the whole thing would be a non-issue. Bear Bear 407 says you're the asshole. The fact that he's cleaning your dishes gives me the impression that you're leaving your dirty dishes in a shared space. If you don't want him to clean it, then put it away in your own room. If he's mainly at home all the time, then it's understandable for him to be annoyed seeing you leave dirty dishes around the house and would rather clean it than knowing how long it'll be before you will clean it. Zeus's mum says, you're the asshole. You say it's perfectly reasonable. Already you're doing your own dishes. Why not take the small amount of extra effort to finish off your roommates while you're at it? Speaking of your roommate, so it's reasonable for him to do them, why not? But you do not follow the same thread of thought applied to you. So two different sets of standards. Why does anyone leave dirty dishes anyway? Hmm, well, we all know he washes his and yours. Why don't you wash your dishes when you are finished? You're the asshole. That was just a little quick one there. What do you guys make of this one? The dish issue. Let me know <laughs> your thoughts in the comments below and we'll move on to the next one. I'm not sure why I laughed at that. And our next story comes from Long Gloomy. Am I the asshole for kicking my parents out from our new home? My parents forced me to study a STEM degree that I had no interest in. I wanted to be a photographer. I ended up dropping out after two years. I worked a minimum wage job while I built up my clientele. I had a pretty successful Insta page and started a side hustle helping other photographers slash companies to set up social media profiles. I was pretty fed up with living on the grind and one of my friends was starting a business and asked if I could manage their social media full time. I had some money saved up and I bought a small share in the business too. It was pretty tough going for a while, but our business has really taken off over the last two years. We raised money about a year ago and sold some of my stake in the business. We used it as a down payment for our home. My parents never took my career seriously and they always assumed that I was just wasting my boyfriend's money and that he was humoring me because he loved me. I've tried correcting them, but it doesn't work at all. We are married now and bought a new home. I invited them over to dinner and they were just praising him for buying the house. They had assumed that he had bought the house. He corrected them and said that I had contributed more to the down payment, but they just laughed it off and said, we didn't have to lie to them. I have worked really hard to get here. I don't know if I made the right choice dropping, but I made it work for me. I told them to get out of my house. It was rude and they were very shocked, but I doubled down and said that I didn't want them here. They ended up leaving. They were very hurt. I feel like an asshole because I kicked my parents out of my house. I have hurt their feelings and I ruined the night. It was supposed to be a good day and everyone is upset. My brother is understanding and he thinks I shouldn't have invited them over in the first place. No way. You're proud of your accomplishments. You're proud of what you've done, regardless of even though you was forced to do a degree that you had no interest in. But as you said, you made your life work for you. You struggled through it and you made it work. And now you're really proud of your accomplishments, which you bloody should be. And then for your parents to come in your house, so you, even though you did invite them and then still disrespect you further. Remember, they disrespected you, not the other way around. So absolutely not the arsehole. Why would you want disrespectful people in your house? I wouldn't, so I cannot blame you for doing that either, even if they are your parents. Snoo Donut says, not the arsehole. If they can't respect you and your accomplishments, don't invite them over anymore. Keep up the good job. Fine Prune says, not the arsehole. You tried to correct them. They didn't listen and they disrespected you. You did the right thing. If you don't stop it now, it will go on forever. For the Drama says, you didn't hurt their feelings. They shit all over you and you stood up for yourself. Not the arsehole. Perry says not the arsehole, they were being total jerks. They should have respected you and your decisions and what you have achieved. Loveless Belikov says not the arsehole, they didn't even believe your boyfriend when he corrected them about the house. They are rude. Nina says not the arsehole, your brother is right. And one more from Gratian Violet who says not the arsehole, but it doesn't sound like you either want or need a further relationship with your parents. If you do, I'll call them for a long discussion of your life and how you expect to be treated from now on. From there, if they violate your boundaries again, at least it shouldn't come as a shock if they find themselves out of your life. Now, do you think OP handled this in the right way? Is there a different way they could have handled it? Let me know your thoughts and we'll move on to another one. 
And our next story comes from Low Hovercraft 6137. Am I the asshole for bailing out from being a bridesmaid the morning of the wedding? Hi, I'm 28 female and I got married six weeks ago. My wedding was a hit. I had very non-traditional stuff. My dress was black and white. My husband wore a white suit. I had six flower kids, two girls, four boys, and my sister-in-law was the ring bearer. No one gave me away. The bridal and the groom's party consisted of both men and women. There were two maid of honors and my husband's best friend is also a girl. I had bridesmaids and bridesmen, and he had groomsmaids and groomsmen. Everyone loved what we did there. Also, I got married on my grandparents' property, and my decoration flowers were also provided by them. I owned my clothing line, so I designed mine, bridesmaids and groomsmaids, dresses, and all the clothes were made by my business, men's too, so we saved a lot of money. My friend P, 25 female, got married this Sunday. She was my bridesmaid, and I was supposed to be hers. Her wedding budget was a lot. She paid one fourth of her wedding and her share was double of what mine would have been if I paid for the venue, decoration and all the clothes in retail. We paid for everyone's clothes for my wedding. But the night before our wedding, all of us bridesmaids and P was in a bridal suite having a spa night and stuff just having fun. After all that was over and everyone was going to bed, while going to the bathroom, I happened to hear a conversation that was going on between P and her maid of honor. She was bitching about me saying that how my wedding was so much cheaper, but everyone liked that and that I stole in her limelight and thunder by throwing such an unconventional one when I knew that her own dream wedding was more traditional. She called me insufferable, a bitch and a cheapskate. I flipped that very second. I was angry and went to my room, which I was sharing with two other friends, R and C. I told them what I heard and they said P is being ridiculous and I should confront her after the wedding and told me to sleep on it. I tried to, but I couldn't, so I packed my stuff at the crack of dawn and left. I left the note along with a ribbon kind of thing that she gave us when she asked us to be her bridesmaids and wrote, you can stick this up where the sun don't shine, F you. Apparently, this ruined her wedding as she was one bridesmaid less than groomsman. I also didn't leave the bridesmaid dress. Edit, I paid for it in full, and she wasn't able to find any replacement. She hasn't contacted me, but our friends did text me on the morning of the wedding, asked me to come back. I text everyone telling I'll only be back if she apologizes in front of everyone, just her and the bridesmaids, for saying what she said. She didn't. After that, some of my friends said I was being a complete bitch while others took my side. Many of them are conflicted. My husband says that my actions were justified, but I could have been the bigger person. Tell me Reddit, am I the arsehole? The J-Max says completely and utterly everyone sucks here. You went almost nuclear on her and you knew what you were doing. She was pathetic and spiteful. Good recipe for an entertaining story. EMCCM says, everyone sucks here. You two don't sound like friends at all. You both come across as petty and vindictive. You put in quite a bit of effort to tell us how cool and edgy your wedding and the effort you put into it. Tons of people get married in black and have mixed gender wedding parties. It's not unconventional in the slightest. You know the impact your leaving would have on her careful planning. You could have said something to her instead of sneaking off in the morning. You could have left her the dress. Your actions seem to have been planned to cause the most shock and upset. Honestly, you sound jealous of her budget and the attention her wedding would have received. I'm only going with everyone sucked here because the bride shouldn't have said what she said, but honestly, your actions make me doubt the truthfulness in your account of what exactly she said. Risk and reward said spending nearly as much space bragging about your own wedding here as discussing the actual conflict gives strongs everyone sucks here vibes. <laughs> Eat Shawnee says, I think you're the asshole because it was a private conversation she had with her maid of honor, which is likely her closest friend, confident or relative. She's allowed to have her feelings and nervousness the night before her wedding. It sounds like she was feeling jealous and insecure as your wedding was recent and really outstanding. Your reaction was completely nuclear and petty. Did it ever occur to you to pull her aside privately and tell her you overheard her? To tell her that if that's the way she feels, she should probably withdraw from the wedding. Instead, you sneak out, leave a petty note, and then you say you're only come back unless she publicly shames herself on her wedding day. Yes, your feelings were very understandably hurt, but your hurt feelings seem to have a lot of rage attached to fueling you to pay back threefold or something. Per says, everyone sucks here. Your friend sucks for all the awful things she said about you. You're an asshole for dropping the responsibility you've taken, for the ridiculous note you left, for not at least leaving the bridesmaid's dress and for all the bragging. 
Webby van der Quack says everyone sucks here. What she said was horrible, but you could have gone through with the wedding for the sake of everyone else involved, and the note was really childish. And quotes, apparently this ruined her wedding, and then says, I doubt it. That sounds more like wishful thinking on your part. Snarf Blatt in concert says, the bridezilla criticisms were out of line. You knowing she wants the 100% traditional affair on a special day means you have to pull the punches on your own day. Is that because the dates were close or because she is insecure or self-absorbed? She's an asshole. You didn't have to cater to people who treat you poorly. However, you wanted her to apologize to you in front of her entire bridal party when you say her catty conversation involved the maid of honor only. That seems to suggest you wanted her to be humble or humiliate her on somewhat a larger scale than who was affected by her shitty behavior. You acted like an asshole and you know it. Everyone sucks here. What do you guys make of this one? Let me know your thoughts and we'll move on to another story. And our next story comes from Average Student 1257. Am I the asshole for denying girlfriend's friend, 28 male, to live with us? I-27 male recently bought a nice apartment that's three bedrooms and two and a half baths. My girlfriend, 26 female, of three years moved in with me and it's been great. She does split the rent and the cooking slash cleaning. My nephew frequently stays with us as the apartment is closer to his school. My girlfriend is very close to one friend, 28 male. He does not like me at all. We should stop the story there, right? <laughs> I've tried to be nice to him, but stopped when he told my girlfriend at a dinner party she could do a lot better than me. She laughed it off and told him to knock it off. Some of her friends thinks he has a crush on her. She's made it clear she only likes him as a friend. Onto the issue, the same friend recently got evicted from his apartment because he was having trouble paying rent on time. He has been living with friends and family since. I got home from a long shift and my girlfriend was showing the apartment around to her friend group. When the friends left, she wanted to speak to me. We sat down and she asked if it would be okay if her friend could move into the third bedroom. I thought about it and told her no. She then proceeded to tell me that she already told him it was okay. That started a huge argument between the two of us and she left to stay with her parents. My stand on it is her friend does not like me, is not offering to pay any rent and I don't want to make my nephew uncomfortable when he stays with us. Am I the asshole for denying my girlfriend's friend to live with us? Dude telling your girlfriend that she can do better, doesn't like you, and wants to move into your place. <laughs> I'd have laughed at him. Absolutely not the asshole. And the fact that, you know, your girlfriend asked you about it but already told him it was okay is just not on as well. And I mean, don't get me wrong, it's okay to ask, but the fact that she already told him it's okay, <laughs> yeah then that makes her the arsehole. So, but you're not the arsehole in this situation. Crawl to the moon says not the arsehole, but your girlfriend is. She's seriously inviting someone who clearly dislikes you and disrespected you with that comment at the dinner party to live rent-free in an apartment you own without even speaking to you. Yikes, there's loads of red flags here, but what bothers me most is her inviting him to live with you without your knowledge and then leaving you after an argument that should have been a mature discussion between you both about finding a freeloader roommate for the third bedroom. At best, she likes the attention this friend gives her. At worst, well, you already know. Not the asshole OP and don't let this guy move in when he already doesn't respect you. Ugly duffel bag says, not the asshole, red flag. Moving in anyone is a huge thing, let alone a hostile dude who is romantically interested in her. And who is she to tell him okay? Not her place. Jeepers Creepers says, not the asshole. Your girlfriend was wrong too. One, not consider how comfortable it would be for you to live with someone you don't get along with. Two, not ask you first. And three, not give any defense to the fact that you own the apartment and she just rents. If he moved in, it would only end badly. Better to have the argument now. Finally, lol at the homeless guy telling your girlfriend she can do better than you. <laughs> Lizzie says, not the arsehole. She obviously should have spoken to you before telling him it was okay. And it's understandable why you wouldn't want a guy who openly disliked you live in your home. Oranges says, absolutely freaking not the arsehole. What made your girlfriend think it was okay just to invite someone else that insults and disrespect you to live in your house? What the fuck? The two of them can move in together so she won't have to worry about this friend so much. Trizaratop says, not the asshole. To be clear, your girlfriend isn't the asshole for asking. She's the asshole for telling that it was okay before she even talked to you about it. You are not and never could be the asshole for not wanting to live with someone, especially someone who doesn't even like you, let alone someone who has actively said things to try and sabotage your relationship. And that's ignoring his financial issues. 
I draw my line in the sand on this issue, OP. If she wants to live with him so bad, she can, just not at your place. All residents need to agree before adding a new one, and you don't. End of discussion. Now, what do you guys make of this one? Let me know in the comments below and we'll move on to the next story. And our final story comes from r slash Mark Narrations, our very own subreddit. Head on over there, get involved, post your own stories. From Reward Plastic, who says, am I the arsehole for telling a teenager that a thread is coming off the back of her jeans? Hi everyone, hope you're all doing good. This is a very minor event, but I just wanted to know if there's any way I could have handled it better. Sorry about the formatting on mobile. So I, 24 female, was out shopping with my mum a few days ago. And as we were walking, we saw this group of young girls. They were probably 16 to 18 teenagers, really. We noticed that one of the girls had this thread coming off the back of her jeans. From a distance, it looked like those threads that come off the rip part of jeans, so I wasn't sure if the jeans were starting to rip. We were debating telling her, and in the end, decided to. When I went up to her, I tried to get her attention without her friends noticing, but they were talking, so they ended up paying attention too. I let her know that it looks like a thread is coming off the back of her jeans and it should be fine by the end of the day, but she should check it when she gets home. The reason I think I may be the arsehole is because it must have made her feel self-conscious and uncomfortable. She was a young girl and I can understand how easy it is to feel uncomfortable in this sort of situation at a young age. I'm not sure if I should have just not said anything and hope her friends noticed. Is there anything I could have done differently? <laughs> Absolutely not the arsehole in this one. You were just looking out for someone. You know, you had the best interest in heart. And I can tell by the way that you've got like, you're a good person because you're even checking it on here to see if you've done the right thing. And I think you absolutely did. I had a very, very similar situation once. It was probably, I don't know, I may be the arsehole in this one because it's a bit of a different one. But when I was about 17, I worked in like a sports shop down in the basement. And when I finished, it was about 10 o'clock in the morning I finished, I worked through the night. Then I'd come out and I'd go to the cash point, get some food from the shop and go home. And as I was doing it, I saw this woman come out of like um, a glass door. And as she done it, she had like a, a skirt tucked in her knickers, the top of her knickers. And I didn't go out my way to point it out or anything like that. There was, I was literally just walking behind her and I, I couldn't not say anything. Cause I was like stood behind her and I said, excuse me, uh, your skirt's tucked in your neck as simply as that. And she gave me the filthiest look, <laughs> like, like I had done something wrong. And it made me so self-conscious to that day about, you know, telling people about if I spot something, if they got toilet roll on the bottom of their foot or something like that, you know. And I kept, I, I always relive that situation. I think, like, what, what could I do? I, I mean, I, walk, I couldn't walk behind this person and just watch them with the neck, their, their skirt touched in their neck, because that's even worse. <laughs> oh dear. But... Let's have some comments from this one. And we'll start with that little wild wolf who says, it doesn't sound like you were weird about it or yelled through the whole store. So I'd go with not the asshole. Maybe her jeans are supposed to be like that. Maybe she knew her jeans might be going to rip already or she was completely unaware of the thread. Is it embarrassing for her? Sure, but I still would have wanted to know if my jeans were about to rip. You even tried to tell her without her friends noticing. Not your fault that didn't work. That's much more thoughtful than I would have been. Horror flick guy says, I don't think you were the butthole at all. I work in customer service and I'm always helping my coworkers groom themselves when they don't know something is on them. I'd rather somebody tell me than walk around with something stuck to my butt or in my hair or what have you. Rylan kind of draw says not the arsehole. You made the girl aware that she had some loose threads on her jeans and that she may want to check them out when she has a chance. It's always awkward to have that pointed out by a stranger, yes, but it's better to be able to check to make sure her jeans aren't torn somewhere they aren't supposed to be rather than her walking around with her friends all day then realizing at home her jeans were torn. One more from Art by Elsie who says, not the arsehole, I go by this rule. If something can be fixed easily, like a thread from jeans, a crumb on someone's face, makeup that is smudged or a t-shirt that is inside out and it's not a choice the person made, like hairstyle or something, then saying something about it should not be a problem. And I think helping a younger person with that shows her friends and her that it's not something to be embarrassed about or to be quiet about, but it's just people helping. Now, what do you guys make of that story? What do you make of today's collection of stories? Let me know in the comments if you choose to do so. Never any pressure though either. A huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for spending 20 minutes of your precious time with me today. There is a playlist on the screen right now with more Am I The Asshole videos for you to get involved with, also relationships as well. Please consider hitting that subscribe if you do enjoy this kind of content. We post it every single day. And thank you so much. Much love, guys. Boxes are defeating. Purpose always fleeting. 
I pose questions to the ceiling like an answer gonna come. Truth is too revealing. Life is easier concealing. All emotions to the start on your heart going numb. I shouldn't be in drive more. I just wanna feel alive more. I feel hurt all the time, boy. I can't see straight. I've been 